and yeah. it's like memorable for the crazy cat coming out of the mouth and stuff. That image definitely kind of stuck with me. My name is Blaze. And my name is James. And never have I ever seen Tales from the Dark Side. Tales from the Dark Side. Well, that just about takes care of that, doesn't it? Come live the nightmare of your choice. (laughs) Tales from the Dark Side. Tales from the Dark Side came out in 1990 and is directed by John Harrison. It's about a young boy who tells three stories of horror to distract a witch who plans to eat him. Oh no. So Tales from the Dark Side is a movie I've always heard of. I've always seen it on Shudder under like Shudder Classics. It's always streaming on Schlassics. Uh, the three like channels that you can uh, that are curated movies that they choose for you at times and uh, yeah it's always been a movie I've been curious to see I've heard a lot about I know it has a cult audience it wasn't a hit when it came out sadly but I'm glad that it does have a cult audience because I enjoyed this movie but Blaze we're here to hear about what you thought about the movie why'd you choose it and what'd you think so I chose it you know we love horror anthologies here I think we love them but we also hate them like secretly maybe because we've seen so many that like nothing really stands you know at that pinnacle like the couple films that are the best in the series because there's obviously way more bad horror anthologies than good ones uh this one I think it's it's kind of middling for me I I wanted to check it out because I know it's like the same crew that made creep show one and two and this is kind of like a spiritual creep show three i know there's a new creep show on shutter but it's not quite the same as like creep show one and two it has the same vibe but like it's not the same crew obviously because so many years later but yeah I, I thought this film was all right there's i think one one of the stories really is probably you know better than the others in my opinion but that's going to be this the way with any anthology what did you think about the film james yeah i mean uh so i we checked out creep show for never have i ever last year it was my first time seeing that movie so i went in pretty excited for this one i did enjoy creep show but there were a couple like lamer stories within that one uh this one i mean of course my favorite one is probably gonna be the gargoyle one with james remar i don't know why that one just like uh, was like my favorite of the three and I love that it was a witch's one that she's looking the most forward to uh, it did take me two times to watch it. I did fall asleep during that second <laughs> one uh, about the cat for some reason I don't know what it was but that cat one when I rewatched it it was a lot more enjoyable and very grotesque towards the end of it but for some reason it put me to sleep um, but overall I just like the kind of the overall like weird like fairy tale element of just a kid getting ready to get eaten by a witch and he has to figure out a way to like kind of just like slow her down from dying and stuff like that part i really enjoyed it made me feel like a kid and stuff and so definitely for like as a kid and stuff i could have like enjoyed it a lot despite like you know the sex scenes and the violence and stuff like it, it just has that feeling and stuff and made me feel like a youngster watching it um more so than creep show for the most part too like because mm-hmm. i did like that nostalgia factor within creep show but for some reason that one just didn't work as well as this movie for me for whatever reason <laughs> Yeah, I I can definitely see that. I think the wraparound segment is like fun in a sense because it's like not like any wraparound segment I feel like I've seen before. Usually we, you know, we've seen the VHS tapes. We've seen we've seen the film reels. We've seen trying to think of all like that. We've seen a floppy disk. Like we've seen all these silly like anthology wraparound segments. But have we ever seen just someone telling a story to somebody else? And the wraparound segment does have like some kind of horrific violence in it where this kid's like scared he's going to get killed essentially. So he's trying to entertain his killer with stories, scary stories. I thought it was an original take on a wraparound segment. And I mean, it's obviously awesome because you have Matthew Lawrence just delivering an awesome performance as Timmy. Mm -hmm. I know why you fell asleep during the second segment because it actually dawned on me why this segment was so annoying like that was the most annoying one for me was it's the guy's voice that's like acting in it like the Mm -hmm. the lead is like some old crotchety man yeah and he has the exact same voice as one of the 
uh, aunts and uncles from a Christmas, National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. They want you to say grace. The blessing. Uh -huh. You know the uncle with the toupee that's always like smoking cigarettes and right. he's all like, he's the one that brought the cat. Mm -hmm. See, the, the film is actually revolutionary because he brings the cat in National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation and then uh -huh. that cat gets lit up by the fire, by the tr Christmas tree because it was chewing on the cords. Uh -huh. And it's not the same guy, I looked it up, it's not the same guy, but I swear it's the same character <laughs> in, the second, in the second anthology. They have the exact same voice, it's hilarious. That was the only scene was like his voice is like nails on a chalkboard, so it was hard to get through that one. Right, yeah. And the cat, the cat thing, like it just wasn't that that epic. Uh, but I really enjoyed the James Remar mm -hmm. one. I thought it was like it was just a cool story, but it did have the best and maybe worst drunk I've ever seen on film in mm -hmm. it. Yeah, I had definitely, yeah, the very over the top with that and stuff. And I think that was always common with like '90s movies. I always like feel like they got actors who were like, like, uh, have you ever done this before and stuff. But um, I guess the first one also I wanted to talk about though, just because that one, when I think about it, isn't that memorable of a story. I do like the idea of mummies and stuff. But I guess mm -hmm. what makes that one more memorable is just the actors that we see, like seeing yeah. young Christian Slater, Steve Buscemi, as well as uh, Julianne Moore. That really caught me off guard because I had no idea mm -hmm. that they were going to be in this movie and stuff. I like they might have said their names in the opening credits and stuff, and I might have been like, oh, but like just seeing them in the early '90s and stuff, just like five years later, they would go on to be like super stars and stuff uh well christian slater i think had already done heathers and stuff but it really caught me off guard seeing them in this movie it's in that first opening story yeah definitely i thought that overall the film was just it was fun it was it would be a great like midnight movie just because it has uh did some decent segments i like i said i think the james remar one's my favorite because it goes so many places with it it's like kind of like romantic kind of like saucy but then at the same time it has this this crazy like a crazy twist that you don't really expect from an uh you know a short film or i guess i, I kind of expect crazy twists from short films so when they don't have a crazy twist i'm like ah that wasn't that good of a short but that was actually a decent short like if i just saw that short by itself i'd actually really enjoy it I think also the fact that that one has like a beginning, middle, and end for the most part for that one just because of the time jumps and stuff versus the other ones you're kind of thrown in. There's a lot of exposition with the mummy one with like the backstabbing and like, you know, reporting Steve Buscemi uh, like to the faculty and stuff of the school and everything. Like that's like all kind of done beforehand and stuff and we're just kind of told about it versus this you're actually being shown what is happening and stuff. Like the second one I guess is like tolerable because it's like, oh, such a bizarre over the top story. And and yeah. it's like memorable for the crazy cat coming out of the mouth and stuff that image definitely kind of stuck with me but uh yeah i think though just like this one just that one felt very much like a crazy tale and stuff like that seems like something i could tell a kid about like just right before bed to give him the spooks and stuff so it was a great way to end the one like i'm glad that like the movie knew to end on a strong one because there's a lot of times anthologies do not end strong and stuff so that was cool and then just like finally getting the resolution with the witch story at the end with a little wink towards the camera was like just a nice little like touch and stuff like not a perfect one and stuff but yeah i agree i can see this being a fun time watching at a uh really fun like audience at midnight and stuff yeah it's definitely not the worst anthology i've seen it's it's not the best but i i didn't think it was like bad in the sense that there's some anthology films you watch there and you're just like dude this is like actually I wish I had that time back. Like any ABCs of death film, like I feel like there's only like usually one short in, a, in an entire, you know, alphabet yeah. that's worth that's worth writing home about. This at least like it's a decent time. And if you only have four shorts, essentially, if you're including the wraparound segment and one's good, that's a pretty good odds. Yeah. 
Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's uh, very rare and stuff. And like, I like that it's not over the top or, or overly long too for an anthology film. Cause I think that one of the problems with anthologies is they take advantage of that and make it two hours just because they can and stuff. Like I think I remember creep show being like at least like 110 minutes or something. It might've even been two hours, but now this one I think was only like 95, a hundred minutes and still kept short, but still said everything perfectly. I thought, um, yeah, uh, I, I recommend it. Yeah, I hope uh, you enjoyed watching it for the first time because I did, and I can see myself revisiting it during the Halloween season. Most definitely. Yeah, I, I think if anyone, if you guys haven't seen this either, definitely go check it out because I thought it was 100% worth the watch. It's just like a, if you enjoy creep show movies, this is literally creep show three or the closest you're going to get to it. And I think it does a pretty good job. So. If you guys haven't already go ahead and support us by renting the movie it's available on amazon in the description box below you can click the amazon affiliate link to watch the movie and support the show yeah and after doing that come back here leave a comment let us know what you thought and if you haven't already please smash that like button that's a great way to help us out and support the show and if you're new to watching us for the first time please subscribe and hit that notification bell to get all of our latest updates and if you guys don't follow us on other social medias, we're available on all other social medias. That includes TikTok, Instagram, Twitter. We're available there. You can find all of those links in the description box below. Anyways, guys, that's it for Never Have I Ever this week. Tune in next week for a brand new video.